This is Bob the Beast Sap, and you're listening to Ramsey on Word on the Street. I'm on the street, man. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Welcome to the Word on the Street podcast. It is uh, May 31st, the year 2000 in Chale. We are big. We are big fans of the man here. Um, good to have you guys here in a special Friday night edition. Uh, this is going to be a great a great show in my opinion just for the simple fact that we have a special guest on right now with us as i speak it is none other than mr bob sap himself bob are, bob are you there how are you feeling right now now i'm feeling great but you gotta say it right now you've got to say bob the beast sap that's right <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i was totally hoping i would i would get a bob sap uh uh, laugh at laugh at you at some point. Holy <laughs> shit! This is awesome, man. I can't thank you enough. He is Bob the Beast Sap. He is a professional mixed martial artist, a fighter. He's a he's also an actor, professional wrestler. He's also played in the NFL itself. Um, uh, hopefully, we'll get a chance to ask him about that. I'll just get right into it. But also on the call is Jake from the MMA podcast, co-host. And how you doing, Jake? Very good, very good, very simple. Just follow us on Twitter, the MMA Podcast. Bob, it's a pleasure to have you on and be speaking with you, man. Yeah, and it takes a lot. It, yeah, definitely. What's up? What's sorry, Bob? Sorry, you, oh, Bob's in Japan right now, Colin. Uh, what time is it over there, Bob? All right, Japan right now is one o four p.m. You know, I've got a couple of hours, so I can get ready to board on the plane and uh, see if I can. Attempt to travel back to the United States. I've got to then go on to Turkey to shoot some more commercials and and do some more television shows down there. And, uh, in the meanwhile, I'll get ready for my next few MMA and kickboxing shows. Excellent. Also, it's hard to it's hard to drag this guy out of the shadows, but we have the co-host Ninja making his return on the Word on the Street podcast. Ninja, are you there still? I am. What's up, everybody? Not a damn thing, man. Now, I'll get right to it. Mr. Bob Sapp, uh, I did my research here. Um, it, I knew you were going to be on, so I, of course, just wanted to just to look everything up as far as Bob Sapp goes. It's available on the Internet. Um, and I just figured out uh, a couple days ago that, you know, you are in the UFC, the last UFC video game. You're in the pride mode. You are a character, a playable character. And I didn't know that because, you know, I, I played the game. I've mastered it, but I was always playing UFC mode. This time I saw that you were in the game, so I, of course, played as you. I knocked the fuck out of John Jones with you, sir. It was, it was awesome. It was a hell of a fight. I just wanted to ask you about that. Um, have you ever actually played the UFC video game as yourself? You know, I, no, I, I've, I've yet to play the video game by myself. And that's, uh, you know, I, I am, of course, a big, big, big gamer fan. Unfortunately, with all the work that I'm doing on the road, it just it's really difficult for me to settle down and to even play the video games. The last video game that I was in the United States was uh, one by EA, and I think that was called MMA Legends or something like that, with uh, Randy Couture and Vito, or, 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 or I'm sorry, Fedor on, on the cover. Yeah, um, for the for the, for the UFC game, uh, just wondering, did they just like uh, just model your character like? Did you actually have to do, like, I know there's, like, a rendering process that they do for some people where they take pictures and 360, or did they just model your, did you not even have to show up? Did they just go off of pictures and video? Oh, no. I think it, I went in there one day, and I think they just did some of the basics with the modeling and the rendering. rendering. So, and everything else, they just they pretty much had already placed in the game. Yeah, computer, computer effects are amazing, which is why uh, <laughs> I was doing the... Yeah, I was watching, um, speaking of, I was watching a movie that you've been in. You are an actor. The Longest Yard, Adam Sandler movie, uh, prison movie, football movie, all, all combined into one. I was going to ask you about the scene. Um, it's probably one of the first scenes that they kind of show you in. You are lifting up an entire bleacher full of people, uh, prisoners on it in the prison camp. You're lifting it up, just power lifting that. Sh it, it, how did they do that effect, if you, if you can reveal that little bit of magic? So the first time, of course, I can't lift up the bleachers with the people sitting on it. But the problem when I'm doing that is the seats and the nails, where the seats are being nailed in, and actually kind of, uh, I think, bounce out of there, you know, so like I'm pressing on the, 
the wood part of the seats and the nails would, would bounce up. So what they decided to do is they, they nailed those in there much, much tighter and then put some braces on the back so that then it would remain more stable. And then they just simply had me lift it up. So that was exactly what I did, and it worked out rather well. It was a straight-up optical illusion using good old-fashioned leverage, basically. That's awesome. And I got to ask you about that. Uh, yeah, that movie came out a, a while back, but, um, and, and sorry, like, it, it's like, uh, the connection is a little rough and there is, like, probably a little delay here. So there's a little bit of, uh, sorry if I kind of run over you at times. Just feel free to barrel over me right back, man. Um, The Longest Yard, uh, you did that. Another actor, he's my hero, actually. Joey Diaz. Do you remember, did you actually get to meet? Joey Diaz on the set of The Longest Yard. Do you even remember who this person is? He's a comedian. Oh, oh yeah, Joey Diaz is great, man. You know, and, and Joey Diaz is, we went out to eat numerous times and hung out. And he was the one that said, Bob, when HBO Real Sports is going to put you on, I'm coming over to your room to watch it so I can clown you the whole time. So, <laughs> and right then and there is when uh, HBO Real Sports was following me around with their documentary on on how I was doing overseas and my popularity. And uh, Joey Diaz was right there in my room, and he was clowning and clowning. And he had, he just had a blast. And it was tremendous fun. It was, uh, yeah, I saw the movie again today. Good damn time. Joey Diaz, good comedian. Uh, I like his uh, Joey Karate videos. If anybody hasn't seen that shit on YouTube, you have to check it out. Uh, some of the best crap you'll ever see. Now, Bob, um... All right, I, I will. Uh, here on the Warden Street podcast, I'm kind of known for being a conspiracy theorist as far as MMA goes, but I actually just believe that I'm just telling it like it is. Um, you know, I, I think you know just from looking at it, uh, you know, I understand the reality of the MMA business. I understand that it is more entertainment than it is an actual ranked sport. That's what we talk about a lot here on this program. And that's also, why, of course, why I was interested in wanting to interview you. Because you are one of the few MMA fighters out there, uh, successful, who, who is willing to actually talk about the reality about the business. I mean, and, and it's not that I'm saying, like, uh, it's not like I'm denigrating MMA itself or like I'm talking shit about the UFC uh, by saying, you know, it's more entertainment than sports. My opinion is... You know, just call it what it is. Either way, I'm enjoying it. I'm paying for it. Uh, the fighters are doing what they have to do. Uh, like, for instance, I mean, I've I've seen some UFC fights. Just to t just to tell you where I'm coming from, I think Condit versus George St. Pierre, where he came back from that horrible knee injury, the surgery. I think that fight Condit took it easy on him on purpose. Of course, just letting him get the belt back. I think the Junior Dos Santos versus Cain Velasquez fight. Uh, the rematch where it went five rounds. I think Junior Dos Santos was just taking that beating because they needed to put Kane over as the Mexican champion. I mean, for for the love of God, to, today, yesterday, the UFC announced that they're having a, a new television channel in Mexico. Uh, just it's, it's somehow coincidentally springing up right now. An entire television UFC TV channel in Mexico just so happens the champion is Mexican, Kane Velasquez. I mean. I see fights all the time, and I'm like, oh, that was a work. That was definitely put on. That was definitely rigged, or, or it was definitely matched so that, you know, this person advances to this person. Um, Bob, you, uh, let's be honest here. I, I did, of course, there was the infamous video. It, it's an interview that you did with Mr. Ariel Hawani um, on his show. He claims to be, you know, a straight-up reporter, uh, all about telling the truth. Of course, jour uh, journalistic uh, t to the to the ninth degree, what what have you. But he did ambush you. Um, I, I got to say that that interview was it surprising that he attacked you the way he did. Uh, it, it definitely was. You know, usually when um, you're doing an interview, everyone knows that. The MMA industry is entertainment. They know that there may be a sport of fighting or athlete or athletes that are using combat, and they're disguising it or calling it sport. But 
everyone knows it's entertainment. Everyone knows it's entertainment. Mm -hmm. We know this because the majority of us have the utmost respect for censors who go out there and really fight, dodging bullets, and really involved in in uh, high uh, death and high injury situations. Policemen who are involved in high death and high injury situations. So we respect them, and so we say that this is the entertainment of fighting. And of course, we have a referee. Okay, so and you're playing it on the back. All right, come on. I mean, it's pretty easy. Now, as far as what reporters do, so when they talk, they talk about the sport of it. So they may say, "Hey, Bob, what do you have to do? You got to come out." You've got to come out there on Saturday. You've got to get work with your jab and stick with your knees and then move around a little bit. You've got a bag who's a little bit smaller. And so he's going to dodge about. He's going to dodge around a bit. And you know what? Hey, small things may come in very dangerous packages. Come, come on, let's think about it. The AIDS virus is very small and it can kill you. Or if you have animals left that shock and you stand by a bee, then that can kill you as well. This is kind of how the reporters and the MMA guys, we get into it, and we all have fun. And the guys and, and the fans, the followers, we all get involved in it, and we all have a great time. Mm -hmm. When you step into, when you go into someone such as what Ariel Arwani is wanting to do, he now has mixing the whole thing up. And now he's calling out and saying, well, he cares about people who give their blood, sweat, and tears in the ring. Well, no other reporters were saying that. And the reason is very simple why no other reporters were saying that. They know that those fighters win or lose, they're unemployed after the match. Unemployed after the match. The majority of them are unemployed after the match. Okay? So, UFC yeah. is one of the that maybe you can say that you can have a, a match uh, right afterwards because that may be on what they say on their contract, which contracts are worth nothing. They're worth only just a piece of paper. Uh, so, in other words, I go out and let's say I go out and fight Ninja. Ninja, we're going to get in the ring and we're going to go at it. <laughs> and Ninja and I, we, go, we, we take it on, we do a straight-up battle. I mean, we're blasting each other hardcore. Bang, he, he gets a better boom, knocks me out. He's up there, he is a champion, and, and I'm out. So, is it that the beast now will have no job, or will it be the ninja have no job? Guess what? Right then and there, nobody has any jobs. Mm -hmm. And it's usually going to be big, it's usually going to be both. And I can explain to you why. Yeah, that's... Ninja now, mm -hmm. but 